Alright guys, the video for today is going to be about how you find corruption in police departments. And the reason we're talking about this today is because there's this, this idea that uh, police departments across the country are wrought with corruption from the ground up. And that that's the reason we need body cameras, police reform, and, and all of these other things. Uh, the, the point that I want to make to you today is that there is open corruption in a large number of police departments across the country. But the people that are looking for corruption are often the ones that are corrupt themselves. Uh, meaning that, you know, you're not going to find corruption by and large amongst the ranks and rank and file police officers. The places that you find corruption at a police department is usually at the top. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about Whitehall, Ohio, although the topics we're discussing today are fairly universal for police departments across the country. And these are things that a lot of different police officers have dealt with over the years. Um, if you remember, we're going to be kind of referencing back to this video I put out on the body camera channel a few weeks ago now, maybe a month ago. It says a month at the bottom of the screen there. Um, this was the, the video with the uh, Whitehall Police Department or Whitehall Police Officer who was fired for those like really short snippets of body camera footage. And um, a, a lot of people commented on that video. They said, you know, how can this happen? Isn't the union going to do anything? Uh, can he sue to get his job back? And that's going to be kind of the way we're going to discuss this public corruption topic today. And it, it might be a little too complicated for some people. You might have to like really think about it, but trust me, this is where it's at. Um, the reason I say this is public corruption, and I, I put the definition up on the screen. I'm going to read it just for my own benefit once again. It says dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. And the type of fraudulent or dishonest conduct that we're talking about is going to be the way that they fired Officer Ortega in Whitehall, Ohio. Um, this is how a lot of police officers are fired by corrupt administrations that are looking for a way to subvert the rules. Um, if you remember, there were there were two major factors in the reason they gave for firing Officer Ortega. The first one was that he said he was going to make life hell for the police chief and that his goal was to get the police chief removed if changes weren't made. And in that video, I talked about how Officer Ortega was actually the grievance rep for the Whitehall Police Department. Uh, what does a grievance rep do? Well, I actually brought up the, um, the Ohio Revised Code. I'm going to pull it up for you here in just a second. Got it right here. So this is the Ohio Revised Code. This is basically the, uh, the list of laws governing, governing the state of Ohio. And this particular code section that I brought up is uh, the rights of public employees. And this is, if you want to look it up for yourself, section uh, 411703. And it may, it deals mainly with public employees, uh, union activities. And the, the part that I want to read right here are points four and five, uh, the rights of public employees. And this is saying that they, they should not be infringed or the, the, the employer should not be trying to stop employees from doing these things uh, to bargain collectively with their public employees to determine wages, hours, terms, and other conditions of their employment um, and continuation, modification, or deletion of existing provisions of a collective bargaining agreement and enter into collective bargaining agreements. Um, basically saying that uh, public employee unions are allowed to get together and talk about the terms of their employment, the rules, regulations, and all of the things, those things governing how they do their job, because it has to do with like working conditions. Uh, that's, that's the, the guts of what I just read there. And then another protected activity is here in point number five, the ability to present grievances and have them adjusted without intervention of the bargaining representative. Um, as long as the adjustment is not inconsistent with the terms of the collective bargaining agreement, uh, then affect and yada, 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 and have the opportunity to present and have them adjusted. Uh, what this is saying is that as a, uh, a member of a public sector union, you have certain activities that are protected. 
uh, some of those activities that are protected are your ability to file grievances against your employer saying, look, you guys aren't following the rules. This is not a work environment that the employees collectively are happy with. We would like to file a grievance and have this, this kind of rule or this kind of conduct adjusted. Often as a union representative, quite frankly, it is your job to make the chief's life hell if he is not following the collective bargaining agreement. But one thing that happened in Whitehall is that the chief of police and the mayor and the safety director all agreed that when Officer Ortega said, I'm going to make your lives hell, they agreed that that was um, not protected speech and they chose to fire him. Uh, they, uh, one of the things that they did because they knew that if they mentioned, you know, him filing, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen, him filing excessive grievances would be detrimental to their employment. They realized that filing grievances is a protected activity. So what they did instead is they went and found some body camera clips and they said, due to these four short body camera clips, we're going to fire him saying that he is speaking to the public in a negative manner about the department. Um, I've got those clips. I'll go ahead and play them now. <sighs> Forgot how much it sucks having to wear this uniform. <sighs> Looking forward I'll to retiring that, every day. Yeah, you've been what, 25 years? I'm gonna uh, go and pretend to do some work this afternoon. I'm pretend. Done. <laughs> I'm done for the day. <laughs> All right, so you just heard those clips for yourself and. What they did is they they edited very selectively uh, a couple of portions of his body camera, and these are these are situations where Officer Ortega was heard saying things that police officers across the country will say probably multiple times a day. Uh, every day, I look forward to retirement. I, with 13 years on as a police officer, look forward to retirement every single day. Uh, I forgot how uncomfortable this uniform was. Uh, just before that, he mentioned that he had been on an extended period of leave where he wasn't wearing the uniform. I can tell you that a police uniform is not comfortable. The vest is uncomfortable. The belt is uncomfortable. Getting in and out of your car, wearing a gun belt and a vest is uncomfortable. Uh, every police officer who's ever worn the uniform has probably more than one occasion said that the uniform is uncomfortable. Uh, what else did he say? He told a resident, Hey, I'm going to go look, I'm going to go find a way to look busy for the rest of my shift. This is just a way that he, he found to get out of a conversation that he was having with a citizen and try to do it in a whimsical way. Uh, because as a police officer, if you go out and say, you know, I'm going to go out and write some tickets, people tend to get upset about that. Um, if you say, I'm going to go look for someone to arrest, people think, oh, you're just going to look for a reason to arrest somebody. Um, if you want to try to disarm people and do it in a, a cozy, friendly way, you say, hey, I'm going to go out and look for a way to make sure it looks like I'm busy or look for a way to keep busy, something, something like that. That's what he said. Um, and then I've already forgotten what the fourth thing that he said was. But it's laughable because those are the reasons that these knuckleheads here chose to list as reasons that he was fired. Now, the reason I say this is corruption is because we'll go back to the beginning, dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. Uh, the real reason that Officer Ortega was fired is because he was threatening to uh, file grievances against the city. The city didn't want to have to face those grievances. They didn't want to have to go through all that court time and all that other stuff. So they chose to fire him. Um, now people asked, what is the union going to do about this? And will he get his job back? This is kind of the other side of that corruption coin is because these two guys here on the screen, the mayor, I don't have a picture of the safety director, the safety director and the chief of police in Whitehall, when they fired officer Ortega, they knew damn well the minute that they fired him, he would be getting his job back because the reason that they chose were frivolous. But why did they go through and fire him if they know he's going to get his job back? There's two major reasons for that. The first reason is because they wanted to punish him. They wanted to make him pay and they wanted to send a very clear message to all of the officers in their department that if you speak out, there will be consequences for you. 
The other thing that they did is they know that if they make up some BS reasons for firing someone rather than listing the real reason that they fired him, there will be no penalties for them. If they went ahead and said, hey, look, he he threatened to file excessive grievances against the department and we don't want to face those grievances, so we fired him. They know that that would be a clear violation of law and they would lose qualified immunity in that situation. Instead, they made up some BS reasons saying that he was disrespecting the department, not following rules, things like that. And that way they are shielded from um, personal responsibility. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, police officers are, we have this, I have this binder that's like this, this big. Um, I'm expected to follow every single rule, every single code, every single little thing in that book every single day throughout my day. And if I violate any of those rules of conduct, any of those directives in any way, shape or form, I'm expected to face discipline and I will have to answer for the mistakes that I make during my shift. This is a normal thing that we all understand. These corrupt politicians they don't have to follow the rules. If they follow the rules, the city pays the fine for them. They don't have to pay the fine. They get to continue going on throughout their day. And at the end of the day, they still got to make, and I've got a picture of them here. I'm going to put Ortega up on the screen. They still had the pleasure of screwing with Officer Ortega. They still had the pleasure of making this man go unemployed for a year, nine months to a year for the amount of time that it takes for an arbitrator to look at the case and say, hey, look, you unfairly fired this guy. You need to give him his job and his payback. At the end of the day, the only person who's actually lost anything is Officer Ortega. Because uh, for that period of time, he had to struggle to pay his bills. A lot of his bills probably went behind. He had to fight with collections agencies, had to worry about how he's going to pay his mortgage and literally feed his family. But these politicians don't have to worry about that. They will knowingly fire an officer knowing that he will get his job back and that the only consequences are for the officers. The effect that this has on the police community is that you have a lot of police officers, and this is another hot button issue that people are always bringing up. You know, why don't police officers care more about their job? Why don't they have more compassion about their job? Why don't they stand up to public corruption? Uh, because these police officers still have families that they need to feed and, you know, they don't want to lose their, their health insurance and, and all of these other things. A police officer can be 100% in the right, stand up for what is right and good and stand up to these corrupt politicians. He will lose his job. This as a police officer, you're aware that your family will suffer if you choose to stand up and do the right thing. So a lot of police officers, and they know this is what they're doing. A lot of police officers are afraid to stand up and speak out because they don't want to be in the situation where officer Ortega now is, where he has four children and he has to figure out how to pay his, his mortgage and put food on the table. I, I, I don't think people understand in strong enough terms, the effect that this has on police officers. Um, this is the way that corrupt government officials continue to do business by threatening to fire officers when they know there's not a fireable offense because they know at the end of the day, they will face zero consequences for their actions. The only thing that we can do as citizens is encourage our fellow community members to vote with integrity and vote these people out. Unfortunately, I don't think there's enough voters left in America anymore to vote with the amount of integrity that it takes to get these people out of office. I think that's it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.